Welcome back to my channel everyone, Sweet Tips here. This is the jeweler's tool drawer. It hangs open below his workbench and stores his tools for him. And as he works on the pieces of jewelry, the filings, clippings, and trimmings from that work fall down into this tool drawer. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna gather up all of this gold dust that will contain much precious metals. We're gonna gather it up and we're gonna process this and recover the pure gold that it contains. Here's our jeweler's scrap, the filings and clippings from his tool drawer. It's about 160 grams. That includes the uh, weight of the bag. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pour this out into this uh, corningware dish and look at it and see exactly what it is that we're dealing with here. Now it's just a matter of sorting through this material. What I'm going to do is uh, set all these little pieces of carrot gold aside and we'll encourt these with some silver. Just going to go through here and see exactly what it is we're dealing with. Here I've got an unglazed melt dish and what I'm going to do is uh, set this uh, non-gold material in here. That's a piece of paper. Here is a peanut but it's going to have some gold on it so I'm going to stick that in here. It's combustible. Here's a little piece of nylon material. It'll burn but it's got gold dust all over it so I'm going to set that in there. These little discs that he uses to uh, grind and sand pieces of jewelry with, they're going to be covered covered with uh, pieces of gold dust. And the paper will burn, the abrasive will get left behind, and then the little center part there, it's made out of brass. We can uh, dissolve those out with the acid. So I'm just going to continue to go through and sort all this material out the best I can. Over here I'm putting the silver pieces. Here I've got the uh, gemstones and anything that I find that's not metal. And then over here I've got the carrot gold. We're going to import that separately from this uh, gold powder. I've got everything sorted out best I can. What I'm going to do is uh, put our material in this melt dish now. That's all our combustible stuff. That's the plastic bag. And we'll just transfer this uh, gold dust now into our melt dish so that we can do an incineration on this material. I spent about an hour and a half sorting through all this material. This is pieces of silver. This is pieces of carrot gold. And this is the uh, gemstones that I found in there, plus pieces of non gold metal. And so we'll come back to that in a minute. Right now what I'm going to do is take this out and put it in our furnace and do an incineration.
while we're waiting for the material to incinerate out there I'm going to take our carrot scrap here we're going to put it in this melt dish and now we'll take it out on the melt table melt it up into a button Here I'm going to add some borax. The borax will uh, combine with any junk that's floating on the surface of the molten gold there and pull it off to the side. As you can see, the uh, gold is staying molten just from the heat of the dish. That's why I picked it up to get it to cool off a little bit. Here I'm going to apply a little bit more borax. Like I said, that uh, combines with any junk floating on the surface of the gold. And pulls it off to the side and I think here we go we've got it to solidify now I'm gonna reach in here with a pair of metal tweezers we're gonna pry it out of the borax pry it out of the dish before it gets frozen there if you wait too long the borax will glue it in you got to reheat it and then we're gonna douse it in some water and cool it off and take a look at our uh, gold button Here's our button that we melted up of carrot gold. I'm going to put some scratches on this touchstone now. And we're going to do some tests on this, see what kind of uh, carrot gold that we've got here. This is 14K test acid. Let's see what kind of result we get here. All right, if you look right here, I put 14k test acid on this uh, streak it's looking like 10 karat gold so I think we're gonna call our uh, button of gold here 10 karat and use that to figure the inquartation let's get a weight on this uh, gold button here this is the material that we sorted out of our, our uh, scrap there and melted into a button put the melt dish up here zero it out and now we'll throw our button in thirty seven point five grams of 10k all right we've got thirty seven point five grams of 10k multiply that by point six three five we're gonna need twenty three point eight grams of sterling silver to import this button of gold. I need 23.8 grams of sterling to import this piece of 10 karat gold. So what we'll do is this is the silver that I picked out of the uh, gold dust. We're going to use this for the importation. There's 17.9. There's 23.6. We need 23.8. 23.6 is close enough. Now let's take this out and melt this up on the melt table and quart this gold.
All right, let's transfer our gold to a beaker. Rinse it off with plenty of distilled water. Get all the tap water off of there so we don't form silver chloride when we do the nitric digestions. There we go. Here's our corded gold. We're going to add some distilled water. And then we're going to add some nitric acid here. And we're going to start extracting the silver and the base metals now out of our imported gold. Cover it up. Put it up on the heat. Alright, our material has been in here for about 20 or 25 minutes. And I think it's done now. Everything that's combustible has been burnt off. Okay, while we're waiting for the uh, quartered gold to part with nitric, I've added the incinerated material to this beaker. And now what we're going to do is pour this or push this through this fine screen and get this material divided up into a nice fine powder. Got it ground up as well as I can. I'm going to uh, add this to our beaker now. And then, got it all broke up real fine. These are some small pieces of gold and other material. And it's uh, small enough that we should be able to just add it right on in now. Here's our material in a finely divided state. Add a stir bar. And now we're going to pour in some distilled water on top of our finely divided jeweler's waste. Alright, let's uh, start the stir bar. I'm going to add some nitric acid just a little bit because I don't know exactly how this is going to react in such a finely divided state. So I'm going to put in about uh, 50 milliliters or so, I guess. Cover it up and just let this react. Low heat. We've got all the jeweler scrap sorted. I've got the carrot stuff and corded there on the left and I've got the finely divided stuff on the right uh, with a stir bar boiling in concentrated or dilute nitric acid rather. We're going to try to extract as much of the silver and other metals that we can with the nitric acid and we'll go from here.
crank the heat a little on this one and let that boil to remove the silver and other metals that are soluble in nitric acid. We're going to pour off this second nitric boil into our silver jar. Now we're going to add some distilled water. Let's pour in some more nitric acid. And this will be our third nitric acid boil here. Okay, while we're at it, let's go ahead and add a shot of nitric to our... Uh, finely divided material it's about 50 milliliters I'm gonna add this right on in now I don't see a big reaction what that tells me is that uh, most of the stuff that's soluble in nitric acid has been dissolved. This will be nitric boil number four. I believe I've got everything extracted here with the nitric acid that I can get. So what we're going to do is pull this down off the heat. And uh, what I'll do is add some distilled water to this. And cool it down. And allow it to settle completely and that test I really don't see a whole lot of uh, anything in solution there Looks like it's got a little bit of orange, maybe a little bit of green going on. Possibly some traces of precious metals, uh, platinum or palladium. Not enough to uh, do a recovery and refining on. This is our fifth nitric acid boil of the uncorded gold. And people are going to be asking why is three tips adding silver to the gold? and then pulling it right back out. The answer is, what we're trying to do here is make an alloy of gold that is 25% pure gold and 75% and uh, silver and base metals. Then, and only then, will this nitric acid be able to pull the base metals and the silver out of the gold. And to prove that this is essential for the recovery process, what I'm going to do, this is my 14K wedding band. That's boiling nitric acid in there. And I'm going to drop this in. I'm going to leave this in there for the next few minutes while we uh, process some of our other material. This is a vacuum bottle, and I'll use this uh, connection right here. And what I'll do is I'm going to pull the solution out of this beaker because I do not want to disturb the solids on the bottom of this beaker. So we're going to use the vacuum bottle to pull the uh, liquid off of the solids from this beaker. I 
again what we're doing here is pulling the liquid that's been settled for quite some time now off of the settled solids from our beaker up here if we tried to pour this off the solids would get disturbed get back in the solution and then when we go to filter this solution it would make it that much more difficult to pull the solution with large amount of particulate through the filter here's our first look at what we've got left in the beaker for solids solids here let's uh, that took about five minutes to set that all up and take care of that so our 14k gold ring in here has been boiling in hot nitric acid for that long and I just want to show you here you know, take it out as you can see it's unharmed untouched by the nitric acid and the point of this uh, experiment here is to point out that the uh, high carrot content high gold content of 14k is impervious to boiling nitric acid so that is why we have to alloy silver with the 14k gold then and only then will the nitric acid boils be able to penetrate to the core of each of those pieces remove every bit of silver and every bit of base metals out of all of that encorded gold this is the solution that we pulled off now what we're going to do is move this up onto the fume hood up here uh, one more time the reason we pulled this liquid off of our solids is so that now we can pour it through the filter it should pull through this filter fairly quickly without loading that filter up too badly once we get the liquid pulled through then what we'll do is we'll go back over here to the solids and get those into our filter That liquid pulled through quickly. Now what we're going to do, there's what we've got in the filter. Not very much. I'll save this in my uh, paper storage. We're going to take this out of the way now. I'm going to put in another funnel with a different filter in it. This has got a filter that uh, specially folded so that it fits down in there, rides up the side of the Buckner funnel and it will capture 100% of our solids. None of the solids will make it past this filter. Now we're gonna to try to pull the solution off of the solids in our beaker. Here's what we got inside of our beaker. Looks like black mud, but there is some gold down in there. All right, let's collect up our solids. I'm gonna get the uh, stir bar out of here. Here you can see some of the gold. It's up in there. Oh yeah, look at that, man. That's looking real good. That's all gold powder right there from the jeweler's filings. But most of that right there is gonna be uh, gold that we can recover and refine. That's our carrot gold. mixed in with the uh, abrasive 
material from the disc plus the uh, the jeweler's polishing compound that he uses so there's gonna be a bunch of that in there gonna add some distilled water to rinse this out real good all right here's my wedding band unharmed after being in the nitric acid that should demonstrate why it's important to add silver to the carrot gold if we don't add the silver then the nitric acid has zero effect on the high carrot gold here we go we're gonna put our funnel with our solids now back into the same beaker that we just pulled it out of with the stir bar in it take a look at this man this looks pretty cool that's our gold here's a better shot of the gold you can see it glistening feels like there's about an ounce of gold in here I'm gonna put this right down in this beaker here okay here I have a couple of pieces of copper pipe and what we'll do is I'm gonna put them in this big beaker up here and now we'll take this solution that we just pulled off of the solids this is the nitric boils it's gonna contain traces of platinum and palladium and some silver so what we're gonna do is just gonna add it to this big beaker with the copper in it we we'll start cementing out the precious metals that are in this solution all right we're just gonna let this react you can see the metal is coming out of solution on the piece of copper we'll just let this sit in here now covered up I'm gonna rearrange things so that we can uh, begin working on our our uh, finely divided material here now whenever I do two things at once in a fume hood it always gets crowded I need to pour the silver solution off or this nitric boiling nitric solution off into my silver jar Now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna add some hydrochloric acid to this gold. It'll start dissolving almost immediately. Okay, now let's uh, add some of the hydrochloric acid to this beaker. And we're gonna start dissolving the gold particles in this beaker all right let's drop the stir bar back down in here turn on the stir and add some heat all righty we're gonna give both of these a shot of sulfuric acid what this will do is this will precipitate out any lead that may be present in our gold what I'm going to do is measure out about uh, 30 milliliters of nitric acid. We're going to add it right on in and start div uh, dissolving the finely divided gold in here. This will form aqua regia in this beaker and dissolve our gold. I'm going to add some nitric acid to the encorded stuff over here shouldn't take much maybe well that's three milliliters let's start out with that okay down here you can see a little layer of gold on the bottom of the beaker and it's uh, covering the bottom of this beaker pretty good so we're gonna have to dissolve all that material 
before we move on. Both these beakers have been on the heat now for about an hour and a half, two hours. I've added another about uh, three milliliters of nitric to this one to get everything to go into solution. Over here, I added another 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and about another 10 milliliters of nitric acid. And I think we've got everything to go into solution now. On both of these, we're going to pull them down and let them cool off. I've got some ice here made from distilled water. And we're going to add it to our solutions to cool them down and to dilute them. And this will help precipitate out any silver chloride that may be present. While we wait for the gold solutions to cool down, let's uh, reach back in here. This is our silver from the nitric boils. See what's going on in here. I can see silver starting to collect down on the bottom of the beaker. See if I can get one of these pieces of pipe up off there. There's one. All right, I finally fished one out of there. And there's a fair amount of excess nitric acid in this solution. That's quite all right. We'll just sacrifice the copper to get the uh, silver out of this solution. And you can see there it's uh, creating a fairly decent reaction. The solution will have gold, or not gold, silver, a few platinum group metals, traces, and uh, maybe some platinum, palladium. May, there might be a little bit of gold in here too. That nitric, hot boiling nitric has been known to put traces of gold in solution. So. The cement silver out of here is going to be a very dark gray color and we'll just add it with the rest of our cement silver and then we'll melt it up into shot and run the silver shot through the electrolytic silver cell and then we can recover the precious metals, the gold and platinum group metals out of the anode filter baskets from the silver cell. Got a Wattman number two medium flow filter in here. So we're going to go ahead and filter our uh, encorded carrot gold first. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to reach in here and get a Stannis test. Before I forget, and you can see by that dark stain, we've definitely got gold in solution. On a piece of filter paper. And let's do a Stannis test. Just to verify that we've got gold in solution. This is going to load the filter up rather quickly, I'm afraid. All right, I've got just about everything into our filter now. What I don't want to see is a whole bunch of little pieces of carrot gold hoping that the uh, amount of nitric that I used was sufficient to dissolve everything. Oh, I do see some carrot gold up there. See it? That uh, black material right there is the 
abrasive. There is a few pieces of carrot gold left up there. Not much. Here's a little bit of undissolved carrot gold that was in the bottom of our beaker. Not much. Maybe a tenth, two tenths. I'm gonna rinse down the funnel real good with some distilled water. That all pulled through the filter quickly. Here's what we've got in the filter now. It's just a bunch of uh, green material. So what we'll do is we're going to transfer the gold solution into a clean beaker. it's more important than ever to get a uh, stannis test here because we're not going to be able to see the gold precipitate out very well in this dark solution here we go first precipitation with sodium metabisulfite we won't be able to see too much here because the solution is uh, dark and it won't be like uh, when we have a nice clean orange solution. I think we've got everything precipitated out now. Do another Stannis test. Here's the first Stannis test right here. You can see the dark stain that we got before the precipitation. And now we've got almost zero. I do see a little bit of an orange color there, indicating we've probably got some platinum in the waste solution. Here you can see the gold built up on the bottom of the beaker. This is one of the drawbacks of working with a uh, dirty solution. You can't really see what you got going on in the beaker. Uh, I've got a uh, specially folded filter here to fit down in the funnel so we can capture 100% of our gold. The recovery phase is complete. Now what we're going to do is take our uh, our gold here that's in this filter and we're just going to carefully add it to this beaker. I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid. Add a squirt of sulfuric acid. Take care of any lead that may be present. Adding some nitric acid now. Put a 
lid on this thing and add some heat. And we're going to re-dissolve the gold a second time. Gold is dissolved a second time. I'm going to pull it down off the heat and let it cool off. All right, we're going to put some ice in here and cool this off. These ice cubes are made from distilled water. Orthodox method, but it works. We've got the uh, solution to clear up nicely. Uh, the color is just a little off. And that is uh, par for the course with respect to jeweler's scrap. It's notorious for having junk in it that follows the gold through each refining. That pulled through the filter quickly. And here's what we got in the filter. What we're going to do now is add the solution to a clean beaker. Let's get a Stannis test on our solution here. Gold in solution. Here we go. We're going to use some sodium metabisulfite to precipitate out the pure gold. This time we'll be able to see it. I'm going to add another spoon of the SMB. That was just two spoons of SMB. Let's get a Stannis test, make sure we got everything dropped now. As you can see by that negative Stannis test, all our gold has been dropped. This is a waste container. We're going to pour off the uh, waste off this solution. Off the gold here and get our pure gold powder on the bottom of this beaker. Here's a look at the pure gold powder down at the bottom of our beaker. Rinse it with some water. Now we're going to rinse it with a little bit of acid. 
Hydrochloric acid rinse. I'm going to give it a quick hydrochloric acid boil. This always seems to help clean it up. Gonna rinse the gold off now. Pour off this hydrochloric acid boil into our waste container. Here we go, we're going to get our gold down into a uh, melt dish. Let's take this gold now over here to the melt table. And let's melt this up to a nice little bar for the jeweler. There's our little double decker bar. I started pouring it in and then it stopped. The flow stopped out of the dish. And so I tilted it and uh, poured it on top of the one that's already in there. It welded together. So it's highly unusual looking. Let's see what kind of yield we got on this thing. We've got 40.1. So let's see what that's what's that gonna give us. Four zero point one. Divided by 160 equals 25%. So 25% of the scrap that we uh, swept out of that jeweler's drawer uh, was pure gold. All right, I'd like to thank everyone for watching.